I'm the original cosmic supreme master right here. The complete you, all alone, no one else in the universe besides you. Free above your universe freshly and fully accomplishing whatever is important to you. Confirmed by yourself through understanding simple mechanical facts. Version 1. Definition of. I'm the. Your existence. How you identify yourself. You exist as. The conditions and faculties you own which are both seen or unseen. The unconditional state of your presence. Who. Not what. Definition of original. The first, primordial inherent. Existing at, or from, the beginning, or even timeless. Basic and fundamental. Definition of cosmic. Inconceivably vast. Taking in the entire universe. All-inclusive totality of existence. Including every aspect of the entire range of the universe. Both moving and unmoving. Both relative and absolute. Definition of supreme. Strongest, most important or most powerful, from the Latin supremus, superlative of superus, that is above from super, above, utmost, overriding, unconditional greatest. Definition of master, ruler sovereign, has others working for them, has dominance or control of something, a skilled practitioner, acquired complete knowledge or skill, from the Latin magister probably related to magis, more. Definition of right here. No required journey to get to a place you're not. Always already. Inherently resident. No requirement to clear anything out of your way. Presence. As. Is. Isness. The purpose of this information is for you to deliberately command your universe with your primordial totality of existence by becoming aware of it. It's solely intellectual understanding, called higher order cognition. You'll naturally act more expanded with your cosmic organizing power, producing expanded results in your daily life. If this material captures your imagination, you'll carefully consider it slow down, put on your thinking cap, and continually review it until comprehension is sufficient. You'll come back repeatedly to hear it say things you didn't hear before. Many condensed packets of information come at you quickly, so you must read it many times, maybe a hundred to fully wrap your head around it. Points that are too abstract to grasp will take on practical utility. New experiences in your life will draw more from the text. You look at the same words in a new light, which ultimately becomes a deep realization of practical workable results to instantly materialize everything. In your life while completely at home with who you are as the original cosmic supreme master right here. This text has no division between intellectually understanding hearing how to ride a bike versus actually riding the bike. Intellectual understanding of who the bike is, and who is riding it, results in actually riding it since the bike is also yourself. Unlike other teachings, the singular totality of who prevents you from dividing yourself into a state of not knowing what to do about. Information you've heard. That's because the information in this text is about who, not the division between who and what. Later, I'll have you act on this abstraction to see what I'm saying. Higher order cognition. The information you use to create your own fresh new ideal world is supreme master. Now we'll identify the first mechanical fact and cornerstone in the sequence of facts that are your higher order cognition. To confirm everything that comes after it and why it's essential. To trace your journey back to this first fact as your foundation. Any two or more things have in common a reference field that doesn't divide or reduce. Let's look at an example. This napkin presents the knife and fork. Here the napkin is a common denominator that gives us a reference field for how big or far apart the silverware pieces are, or even if they're next to each other. Two or more things have to be located in something more fundamental than either. It's a medium of separation too. Present the difference between things. It's a stage setting upon which everything and everywhere is presented. We could eliminate the napkin, and have the silverware float in space. Then space's dimensional attribute becomes a reference field to define the silverware. Time would also be involved since two or more things must be together simultaneously to reference them. What would be the common reference field to present the two attributes of time and space? Something present regardless of any. 
particular time or space presence. Does presence exist even if there are no things present? Let's say the knife and fork are destroyed and gone. There's nothing left of them. That couldn't happen unless a state of the knife and fork are gone was present. Next, let's say that time and space get destroyed because of the end of the universe, like the Big Bang returning to its previous state. Nothing exists. Yet, something still has to exist. What would that be? Without the inclusive presence of a state that is universe gone, it couldn't happen. Thus, presence is a state that all inclusively always remains. As presence remains underlying time space, the nature of presence is not division. With no division, presence is one thing. We can also name one thing as simply presence with a capital P. With no variations or verses, presence is one singular, no variation, all pervasive, all inclusive thing that simply is. Presence is this is it ness. I'll capitalize words to represent their cosmic status. Presence is what any two or more things have in common, and the basis of life, just as the ocean is the basis of waves. Later, we'll discuss how one half of you is pure singular presence, the absolute you. The other half are variations that move around in and as a universe. We'll also define and discuss a procedure where the only thing that matters is presence. It's an exclusive or dedicated time where you command your universe. Presence will be known as your base of attainment. That means I have a practical reason for taking you through this logical flow of ideas. Presence not only references everything, but it is everythingness as well totality. Presence is an unmanifest state that's becoming everything, the fountainhead of anything that exists. It not only underlies all variations as a reference field, but is their source. Presence is like a TV screen that remains a TV screen even when channels are switched. Or just like waves are still the ocean appearing as wave. Wave. Is the ocean. As a human with a personal identity, your presence appears as a me presence as described as. That which can't be seen. But without which there's no seen. That which can't be perceived. But without which there's no perception. That which can't be locally conceptualized or imagined but without which there's no concept or imagination. You can know completely accurately and successfully all you need to know about that which can't be known to express yourself as supreme master. After that success, you have the option not to need to know anything but simply be that presence to accomplish anything. Simply being who you are as presence drops you off at that which can't be known to opt to leave the variations of knowing behind. Later I'll have you do this so that you see what I mean. Presence is the final common denominator, or reference field of all variations, that is, what any two or more things have in common. I symbolize it with the transparent sphere, as seen here. I use it because the line that defines its outer shape is one endless turn, and its lack of features renders it transparent. Variations, my other half, are symbolized by an arrow added to the sphere because in that form, I have things come and go, which is the definition of change. In the beginning, I said that you're the very nature of presence. Now you see that I include both singular non-change and variations. Non-change means there can't be two or more because there would be a change, like the colored balls. Even if the balls were identical, there would be a gap between them to present them as separate. That gap is a change between the two balls. That is the fundamental reason why all of presence is one single state. What about thoughts? Thoughts are still variations. Where are they? You can't hold thoughts in your hand or put them somewhere. Yet when you think of the moon, the thought goes to the moon in your thought space. Similarly, you can't have an identity sense space, which is even more abstract. So even though variations get abstract, thought and identity sense follow the same rule of having the common denominator of presence. The definition of non change means not only one thing but also no thing. Think about it. If one thing has no variations, it also has to be no thing like the transparent sphere. Things or variations mean that an end boundary must stop, and then pick up again to define the second thing. Even one item has to stop with a boundary, or else it would continue indefinitely with no boundary in sight to define it. This image shows the universe is divided by a boundary. That is the fundamental reason why all of presence is a state of nothing. But hold on because soon I'll explain why presence seems like only something. 
We can't get away with the transparent sphere to symbolize no thing because its round shape suggests an unending continuum, and its transparency suggests a lack of variations. Presence is timeless, spaceless, non-dimensional, all pervasive, all-inclusive, endless, and where all boundaries come from. Infinite is another word for endless. Anything infinite has no boundaries and is therefore nothing. Isn't it interesting how nothing is what places everything? I said that everything is nothing, yet it's not a contradiction to say that everything comes from nothing as if there's a distant separation. Not only does nothing underlie and thus place everything, but everything is nothing. That means that actually, it's incorrect to say that everything comes from nothing. Saying that everything comes from nothing is an incomplete truth, or lesser truth. I'll give you an example of incomplete or lesser truths, and how both have their place. Farmer Saad I know the earth is flat. We cut a path through those hills, starting from side to side, and the road was as flat as a ruler. The water just sat there and didn't flow off end to end when it rained. With every fiber of my being, I know that the earth is flat. Dr. Hardball, geologist. Yes, Farmer Saad, what you say is true, but there's a more complete truth beyond your perception. The earth is a sphere of minerals held together by gravitational force. You just need to know what to look for to confirm it for yourself. Let me show you how to track the movement of the stars, and then with a telescope, watch ships proceed toward you on the horizon. John Palucci, Dr. Hardball, the earth isn't just a sphere of minerals held together by gravitational force. There's a more complete truth beyond your present perception. The earth is at the center of presence within you. The root meaning of the word earth is outer condition. A metaphysical reality makes all outer conditions one singular indivisible presence. Let me show you what to look for so that you can confirm this for yourself. How two or more things have a common reference field. How that state is more than time space, so that all of it fills the earth, making the earth a state of nothing. Or one thing which is your inner nature? What's happening here is that perception in the field of variations gives rise to various levels or layers of truth. That means lesser to greater truths. Lesser truths have practical utility because Farmer Saad needs to know if he has a flat road for the sake of practical maintenance. Dr. Hardball must know the earth is round to advise global travel systems. However, if you're going to effulgently command your universe, which is the place I'm taking you, you're going to have to use the most complete truth to act on. At times I may call variations not absolute one thing, even though they are. I do that because when I'm new to you, you use variations as an excuse to ignore that. Like I'm not, or I don't. Whenever I talked about local variations, if I reminded you that all variations including your perception, our absolute one thing expressed, this text would get bloated, over repetitive, and you'd lose interest. So remind yourself as needed. In part, your absolute non changed nature is the modern definition of a black hole. If you've heard of black holes, a region where time space curvature becomes infinite, you'll immediately recognize that you represent them as part of your non changed nature. You don't have to participate in science or invent a pseudoscience to make the connection. It's simple discernible mechanics for anyone of any background, as I'll reveal. Time space is existence because it exists, but existence is more than merely any particular time or space positioning. It's single non-dimensional completeness. Existence is one all-inclusive indivisible all-pervasive status. Existence is all of it everywhere forever, all at once. Presence is another word for existence. One common presence means that San Francisco 2024 includes London 3024, but positioned in the particular time space of San Francisco 2024, seeing only that much of the universe, you aren't aware of its wholeness. But not here, not, now exists too. Why doesn't the nature of existence also include that absence? It does, but only as the experience of a partial view. Presence is what all time and space have in common. Presence underlies and permeates time and space as its source. That which underlies is called substance. Presence could therefore be called the substance of time and space, the most complete fact about time and space. 
By its very nature presence is at all times and places the same. That means life is a singular, non-dimensional whole at every point. Whether you experience it, whether you're a partial viewer, or not life is singular non-dimensional completeness at every point. Not here, not now requires a partial viewer's conclusion. Completeness means everything past, present, and future always has and always will exist everywhere forever right now. Because you exist, you are that indivisible field of completeness. This still silent absolute field is supreme, because it is the substance of everything that isn't. Reduced or divided. Indivisible means you can't be left behind in some spot like your partial view says you can. Because you exist you are the existence touching every point of the universe totality. According to the principle of complete existence, your ability to achieve everything you could imagine, and more exists right here with you right now. Because you're that indivisible presence, you have full access to bend presence back on itself, grabbing anything you want from both San Francisco 2024 and London 3024 or anywhere else. Some physicists like calling that basic character, non-local entanglement. Here I represent you as a wooden mannequin. Below your local being who realizes he owns cosmic non-local entanglement. Here you'll discover the option to skip over science and slip yourself into a factual metaphysician who calls himself the original cosmic supreme master right here. This is a good time to compare physics with metaphysics. I'll explain a situation that shows how you tend to be misled by the seeming separateness of things. There are two jars with their lids off in the ocean, containing an equal volume of ocean water. Perception in time space reveals that although the ocean's body of water is one, the water contents in the left jar aren't the same contents as the water in the right. If you took a sample of the water in the left jar, it would have unique microscopic particles. If all the ocean's water were in the left jar, none would remain in the right. If all the ocean's water were in the right, there would be none for the left. All the ocean's water doesn't fit in the jars. The jar's ocean water can't be all pervasive and all inclusive so that they're not the one common denominator. As you normally experience them in your world, the two jars don't adequately express the true metaphysical relationship. You have to know they do through your understanding of higher order metaphysical facts. The analogy is that all the water fills those jars, so that each jar is an all inclusive one thing. Let's take a look at another jar situation. This time, the lids are on. Here are three jars one is empty, one is half full, and the last is full of water. The empty one looks just like the full one. You can't tell the difference because the fullness in the jar is all pervasive. Only a partially full jar can be perceived as less than. The all pervasive nature of one thing makes it so well hidden. Something completely all pervasive is transparent because it permeates everything so completely. As this endless one thing and no thing is all pervasive, it thoroughly permeates every aspect of you, absolute and relative so that you contain all of it. Just as the metaphysical fact of two jars with the ocean, both aspects of you are one thing, the one thing that everything has in common. You are that still silent all pervasive one no thing, and thus the final essential state of, and the very nature of, presence. Pause, and consider this. Any aspect of, presence comes up out of our common flat non-wave state. I'll visually represent change by using this bell curve. I'm not presenting academic wave theory. This is a more essential practical mechanics. I'm merely mapping an impulse of an event, experience, perception, or any aspect of presence, which comes and goes. It's either flat and still or an impulse. It doesn't get simpler than that, so there's no theory to analyze. This is your flatline state, a state of no attributes or no variations. Everything is line. If who you are wasn't line, the ocean or cosmic, you'd be just another one of those variations out there waving as wave, and not the common denominator itself. As variations require line to bend, line is the bender of wave, which means that line holds all variations. Line never stops being line, even when it seems to bend. Hey that's just like you. Smile. How does wave come to be in the first place? If reality or a base state is nothing from where does experience come? 
First, this no. Thing one thing has a presence. Just because it's a metaphysical presence doesn't mean it's any less a presence than the waving of time-space manifestation. If time-space manifestation waves itself, it has to happen because the nature of its underlying metaphysical presence is to become observable experiential. It's your underlying nature. You have non-change attributes that get expressed as a changing universe, which we'll discuss later. Because of the indivisible all-pervasive nature of this, nothing one thing, you never stop being that even when you seem to become time-space manifestation. To do a wave you seem to pretend to no longer be this nothing one thing. So the quick answer is that the ocean doesn't become a wave. There is no wave. It's only an illusion not real, or an incomplete truth. Remember Farmer Saad and Dr. Hardball. Relative experience comes from that which isn't real. That's the basis for when later on, I say that your changing attributes are only your imagination or pretending. That change is always already arranged as the unmanifest state of determinism. A good analogy for the illusion is a snake and rope. You see a snake on the road ahead of where you're walking. As you get closer you find it was only a rope. Getting closer in this context means examining the self-validating mechanical fact of you as one thing. The best analogy for the seeming bending of line is the one presence rocking itself like a pan of water to create waves, accommodating how one thing never stops being one thing even when it waves itself. Wave isn't a contradiction. And of course our experience of the ocean and waves helps the whole phenomena seem more intuitive. Here's the pan of water as an analogy of our one complete field, the state of presence seeming to reverberate within itself as waves. With this pan filled with water, I slowly rock it back and forth and watch various waves. The waves bounce back and forth colliding with each other, which causes smaller waves. The waves even sometimes cancel each other out. The patterns are unique and endless. Reverberate means that it doesn't divide or become separate. Reverberate means that no amount is added or removed to undergo internal change. Just like line nothing about line has changed when it bends to make a wave. In the background of the pan image is an example of a lake where waves interfere with each other and cancel each other out. That helps us see the big picture of how you as everything are one vibrating nothing. Like the still silent ocean, waves come up from the pan and then return to it. Now I'd like you to say I'm the original cosmic supreme master right here. Put your finger to your lips. Who just spoke? You may say I just spoke yet didn't your line, the absolute non-change you just speak, it just bent to speak didn't it? One line just bent and spoke, bending into your you vibration, that's just simple mechanics. How many possible lines are there to bend and speak? In other words, how many benders of wave are there? Only one because it's all pervasive and indivisible. The ocean spoke, even if it seemed only a wave, any second line would be a variation, and variations only happen as waves. Therefore the original cosmic supreme master right here from your ocean state, just spoke. Listen to who's saying all this all alone inside you, as you. There are then no pretending external, it, concepts such as perception, experience, and events only, you, as the original cosmic supreme master right here. Pause to consider this. Hmm. I'll have to think about this. Just spoke the same way. Now wiggle your finger. Whose finger just wiggled? Again, the cosmic finger. Now say I'm indivisible completeness, perfect order, and perfect integrity. You just spoke from your ocean state which is your nothing state. One thing is complete perfect order. Perfect order means harmony. Harmony equals goodness. Your beneficent perfection. Everything happens in your best interest, whether you conclude so or not. You may say, but a mass murderer or someone satanic could point to their lips and speak the same way. Yes, that only means there's more to your perfect order, integrity, and goodness than you're seeing and concluding about. Local perception can lead to all kinds of conclusions. Again, it's not what it seems to be. K 
Can there be perfect evil? No. The words perfect and evil are contradictory because evil requires absence or lacking, in which something is missing or there's not enough of something. Perfect completeness, the fact of presence, doesn't contain absence. Evil is only an illusion. The illusion comes from comparing differences within a locally constrained field of perception. In this flooring tile example, you can't see how light and dark are the same. Perception has you believe that tile B is lighter than tile A. This phenomenon of a constrained field distorting your conclusion not only applies to objects, but to thought, intellect, and your sense of identity. A tells you that you can't be the original cosmic master right here because you're a different color. But after you get wise, you say I'll be darned. I am that. It was only perception's conclusion which convinced me I was not. If you could see how all the details fit in the big picture of the universe, you'd find yourself in love with everything. Nothing is misconceived or misplaced. If you lose your car keys it happens for your supreme conceived reason. If you mistakenly drink, poison and so-called die, the same. If you're world famous, the same. Let's say you're at a friend's house. Your contact lenses fall on the carpet. You're down on all fours feeling around for them. Your head bobs up at the edge of a coffee table, and you see terrible dents and scratches on the edge. Oh how terrible. How could that have happened? I hate it when things like that happen. What a shame. Then you back up a distance and get a fuller view. And all that seemingly terrible shame was in fact a part of a perfect wood carving. Wow. How could I have ever known? The cosmic you is up to something more behind the scenes that limited perception can't see. I'm not suggesting that you try to love everything because you do so if you had the biggest picture of presence at hand. I'm merely explaining how perception and conclusion operate. If you could see just 10% of the reasons why how terrible happened and how it fits into the plan of the universe, you'd fall to your knees and weep over the unspeakable glory. If you could see all the reasons and how they fit in, you'd simply be in love. And if you could see how your previous reaction of horror and disgust fit in, you'd then smile at it with peaceful affection. You only do what you love. It's time to define you as one all person. OAP. All alone, no one else in the universe besides you. All your private dream. Your first response could be How can I be all alone in the universe when someone else could read this document? and they go ahead to be all alone as sole commander of the universe? And then you must also be saying that I have complete control over them. I can't wrap my head around that. It makes no sense. You're only used to thinking in terms of physics. Now you're being shown to know that there is a common organizing field that's more than time and space. You're opening yourself to infinite, unbounded metaphysics. Indivisible reference field, one thing. One all person all alone. You can pretend to be many. Metaphysics, beyond physics, allows seeming mere micros to be a singular harmonious macro who is all alone and in charge of so-called everyone else, just as if in a lucid private dream. More than time and space a common organizing field means that whether someone else is or isn't in your time space is irrelevant. The best you can do to start wrapping your mind around this is that there's an inconceivably massive organizing power to keep track of the living experience, for everyone everywhere forever all at once. That they're all alone. I say all at once because it's above time space. All that massive stuff fits in the container you call you, not just in your body as a walking universe, but in your containers of mind, intellect, and identity sense. When something supreme fills your container, you never stop being supreme in every way. Infinite unbounded means that rules to make sense according to physics don't necessarily apply to who you are cosmically. It's wide open as a dream on the fly. It's like sitting in an open field as far as you can see. Someone convinces you that only three feet of it can be used. Then when something that requires more than three feet is needed, you conclude you can't. You act like a thirsty fish in the sea. You're used to thinking in a linear hierarchical manner instead of 100% infinite, unbounded metaphysics based on unlimited, one thing, no thing. To be true to metaphysics, you must leave its door wide open. This diagram may assist in loosening that door. True. 
When every part is the whole of metaphysics, even one part can experience complete control over all other parts as if all alone in a lucid dream. Isn't metaphysics bizarre? Smile. False. This is the chorus line puppet standard physics view where limits of competition and dependence are the fact according to perception's conclusion proof. As far as a personal presence that reflects line and wave, absolute and relative, you have a range of bodies for each. Your physical body is the lowest vibration. Your highest vibration body is the person who organizes the relative universe. Then you have a range of non-change absolute bodies. The lowest is your welcome into absolute activities. And your highest is the celebrative embodiment of the absolute. If you're so inclined, there's a document that covers more delicate and personal metaphysical mechanics, like your 12 bodies, a competent cosmology conception. How is it that non-change is in the midst of change? How can this lively presence or lively absolute be non-change? Aren't all variations wave? How can there be activities in non-change? In the absolute, there are still silent variations. They're the raw material of change, just as H2O is the raw material of water, vapor, and ice. They remain prior to wave, or universal. They're the same as the one common still silent feel that everything has in common. A helpful analogy for non-change is hydrogen and oxygen molecules. H2O is the essential constituent of water, vapor, and ice. H2O never changes being H2O even when its nature is to undergo outer change as water, vapor, and ice. Wherever there's water, there's its unmanifest state of H2O. Here's the great significance. H2O goes from vapor to a snowflake without creating or changing to a different H2O. You don't need the experience of transitioning to get anywhere. You don't need to hop on a time machine to travel from San Francisco 2024 to London 3025, if you know. You are presence. You can't get anywhere from anywhere, no matter what your present experience, like being a dummy or feeling helpless. How's that for practical, elegant simplicity? In this image your change is represented by vibration or line bending as wave. Let's look at a sneeze in your changing world. Like a film, each image has no movement. Moving across a movie film strip gives the illusion of changing, via related flashes appearing and disappearing with partial view. The action of the mover moving across it is also still flashes. If you laid out the movie reel on the ground and could see all of it at once, there'd be no doubt that the movies and in every other part exist simultaneously. The still images flash in and out so fast that perception can't recognize non-change. They could be, for instance, flashing a billion times per second. Then, based on something that's a still silent presence, we get the illusion of moving through time space. Achoo. So now I'm using the words lively absolute. Why do I say lively? Because of all this non-change content going on. Because of the you who knows, sees, does, and is everything everywhere forever all at once. That infinite non-hindrance part of you knows the so-called merely physically you is interested in being an original cosmic, supreme master right in your everyday life. You must admit that this nature qualifies it to be called your lively absolute body, a real living presence, not just a stick in the mud void because as far as you can see it's silent stillness. What you're up to? as OAP. What's going on and why? In your absolute completeness, you're in complete control. You love everything about yourself. Yet complete, perfect, and full with nothing missing. You have no place to expand because you're already everywhere doing everything. So through reduced perception you pretend to stop being yourself and experience yourself as an isolated recipient of variations. Why did I say pretend? Because following one thing when all person doesn't divide or reduce. As perception conclusion based isolated recipients, you seek events to know who you are, what will happen, and what you can do. With that, you use your one all mind to seemingly prove whatever you find. The adventure begins. A time comes to discover your hide and seek game, and re establish your identity. Even without the perception of one all person, Use your one thing state to act truly as if you weren't missing. 
you go ahead to command your universe. From your one thing state as OAP, perception, experience and events and flow fondly. Eventually, you know and do everything again. Later we'll cover commanding your universe. You love yourself so much that you want others to rediscover, or find out who you are. It's all about love. That requires you to be covert in a pretending form for a time. With that, you seemingly put yourself on a line of expansion, as seen in the green gold arrow image. A system is then in place with rules to obey and guide you to eventually see and know more until you act as the full you. We'll call that transition systemics or relative systemics, as you expand on your line of evolution. The attributes of your individual life expand. They can be described as a hierarchy from lower to higher vibrations. Be careful here. Reasons are given here to help explain how your localized experience happened. That doesn't mean you should take them to define and know who you are. Keep layers of truths like farmer Saud should in their proper order and perspective, and you won't find contradictions in what I say nor cracks to fall through. The lowest is your physical body, and the highest vibration is the first systemic organizer. That is the organizer of a system that runs the universe. However, as a cosmic master, you'll rise above a system of rules and consequences to be supreme and your own rulemaker. We'll carefully examine how that works later. Different cultures present images of their first systemic organizer and have it go by various names. These images use racial types and garb associated with those cultures so that viewers can identify with them. In my case, I've used a wooden mannequin to avoid distractions from cultures and genetics that some find unappealing. Also these bodies' attributes are more abstract due to the farther reach of higher vibrations. For instance, one of your bodies has a thousand heads. Some have many hands doing many functions at once. All vibrations are physics. Yet finer physics seems meta compared to the standards of the Earth's plane you're used to. So these images can get quite exotic and ridiculous looking when representing abstractions through familiar physical forms. Let's be exacting about your absolute non-change body's attributes, which include some abstractions you're unfamiliar with. Next to them, I'll include possible relative ones. My use of the word body includes more abstract, less tangible attributes associated with the presence. Year, non-change absolute attributes to celebrate love of who you are. All-knowing, all-seeing, all-doing. Infinite stability, infinite flexibility. Completeness, all possibilities complete. Timeless eternity in the midst of time. Stillness in the midst of activity. Non-change in the midst of change. The fountainhead of all variations. Perfect choice. Sufficient supply. Only doing what you love. Doing nothing to accomplish everything. Fond flow effulgence. FFE is defined as flowing. From one fulfillment to the next with no gap, loss, lack, or restriction. You completely enjoy your endeavor, and when you're ready for more, you immediately go on to your next endeavor. You live expanding dreams that are unimaginable in scale. When expressed in boundaries, it's non-hindrance. Relative systemic expansion opportunities to transition with. These attributes provide motivation to find out what's going on, and to overcome limitations or hindrances of rules, thus ultimately coming to. Know the absolute you, which is you returning to a higher you. That's accomplished through a system of guidance that requires strict boundaries to obey with exacting consequences to make sure you keep going forward. Only know see, and do so much. Unstable and flexible. Incompleteness, many things not possible. Not enough time. Can't keep still, especially the mind. Everything keeps changing, can't keep track. You've no idea where things are coming from. You make mistakes and poor decisions. You run out of resources, forced to do what you don't want to do. Many things above your ability to accomplish. Boredom, dullness, suffering, difficulties, tiredness. Commanding your universe. You command your universe with intention. We can't call it a command content of attention. The change that results is called the return of your command content of attention. A change that is less than full is called a partial return. How is it that you do nothing to accomplish everything? 
when you see do and know. Everything everywhere forever, all at once it's already accomplished. There's nothing to do. The finished complete is always in front of you so that there's no movement from unmanifest to manifest. Even when the you who doesn't yet seem to experience all, wants to bring something into manifestation. You have access to who does, because you never divide or reduce. Any of your five senses will eventually experience higher vibration celestial materials and their activities, including all beings. In all realms, you'll eventually hear, touch, see, taste, and smell everything in all the various realms of presence, including all your absolute bodies in your non-change absolute realm. Super duper intention. Let's say that you desire to compose a piece of music. You've heard other composers suggest little bits here and there of what might point in that direction. But you know that what you want is leaps and bounds better than all that. All you can do is compare it to the many pizzas. You have eaten. There was a pizzeria that served one that was unlike you have ever tasted. You couldn't believe it. Why where have you been all my life? I had no idea pizza could be such an amazing experience. The desired piece of music is the same magnitude as that super pizza. But you don't know what that music sounds like. All you know is its magnitude is an abstract concept. Then in the rest of you, the complete part of you unseen, you know it always already exists because there's nothing, missing in completeness. Your causal body just tapped you on the shoulder to let you know it is ready to go. You don't have the slightest idea of how you'd control sounds to produce it. But is it that much different from knowing how to create a $10,000 bill? The exact pulp that goes into making the paper, the type of ink of a right serial number, and so on, there's no way you'll want to care about control over those results. It's good enough that it already exists and you're unseen. The music piece is just an example of a more abstract boundary. With this kind of magnitude at hand, you'd be wise to leave details to your all celebrative body while you be that for your return. Acting this way, you're a royal recipient of service from the part of you unseen. Here's another fun thought about magnitude. You've heard some attributes of your absolute bodies, and what a lovely presence they are. They're everyone's treasure. Multiply that a millionfold. You just heard that millionfold. Representative vibration of what's not absent, right? I let you think about that. Smile. That's why there's infinite expansion beyond your wildest imagination on your line of expansion. There's something that you think you might like, but presume it's utterly impossible. Plus, all kinds of evidence against it is warning you of trouble. You'll imagine airtight stories heard inside yourself, which dissuade you from acting. However, remember, your observation leads to conclusion, and conclusion is a command that sustains results. As an experiential result, you can gracefully organize anything with all the perceived localized perfection you could ever want because the rest of you is independent of systemics. It's good enough that the finished return ready and full, for right however you find yourself, no preparation or requirements, always already exists and infinitely flexible all possibilities you. Imagine yourself as cosmic, as you could possibly be, then blow all those imaginary boundaries away. And you're left with all you. What John just said is only for very advanced practitioners. Gotcha. I double dare you to say that with your finger to your lips. Evaluation is a command content of attention. Ignoring OAP by dividing, isolating yourself into three. You have not decided this is it. I know I'm OAP but something else stands. An unquestioned isolated underlying identity me to examine and decide with. Evaluation is a command. The in the world me. The commanding victim me. This phenomena of a constrained field distorting your conclusion not only applies to objects, but to thoughts, intellect and your identity sense. Page 8. Your dedicated time. There's no technique for you to master. You just make a few decisions before you start. For example, $10,000. A command session is the original cosmic supreme master right here. 
a time set aside to not require being responsible to the demands or activities of daily life or systemics in your world. A favorable setting to gain skill in using your absolute cause. Preparatory resolve for your one-all celebrative body. Prior to your dedicated time, you may review and refresh who you are as one all celebrative body, your highest body in contrast to your first systemic organizer body with its boundaries and annoying rules to obey. You may have text or images in front of you, or simply bring concepts to mind. That should bring you to a point where you're resolved. That you can do nothing to accomplish everything because of who your one all celebrative body is. You may set a task to accomplish, for example, $10,000. The length of time spent is a personal call. If you're still unresolved, you may want to wait another day for your dedicated time. However, there is something to be said for just going ahead shaky and learning from your mistakes. If that becomes too uncomfortable, like you're feeling you're just wasting your time unless you do more, you may stop and return to preparatory resolve to gain more resolve. There could also be a condition where it's appropriate to skip preparatory resolve and slip right into your dedicated time. A dedicated time for your one all celebrative body. Ideally, you sit comfortably and close your eyes. 10 minutes may be a good time to start. That allows you to settle into favoring the still silence of your one body. However, any time amidst any activity, even for a few seconds, could be valuable. A place where you won't be disturbed would be optimal. At this time, you're acting the way your one body would act to acquire whatever you want. Favoring still silence is a key phrase. A dedicated time could be nothing but crazed noise in your mind and body. That's perfectly fine since your one body knows your reason for being there and is infinitely flexible while taking care of the task at hand. Therefore, doing nothing includes not trying to accomplish some kind of correct practice nor trying to get rid of anything that seems to have a mind of its own. See Wolf image below. Even being consumed by involuntary daydreaming is a possible experience that is equally correct. When you become aware of it, you'll automatically return to favoring the still silence of your one body because you'll eventually remember your sitting to command. This dedicated time gets you used to and skillful in operating with your absolute cause. Afterward, you can't help but take that skill with you out into your outer daily world. I'm your infinite safety net. Even if this weren't true that is unable to trace it back to the one fact, all alone as the sole rule maker, you do extremely well by using your authority to command it so. During your dedicated time, what value is there in knowing the more complete truth that the relative is the absolute, the wave is the ocean, according to the most fundamental fact? Let's say you walk into your boss's office to ask him for a raise, today for fun. He's wearing a wolf mask and maybe to amuse you because he knows you've come for a raise. You know it's still your boss. He's not a real wolf and he's jesting you. So you go right on treating him like your boss and do what you came in for. Your dedicated time is where, not out, in your world, and not accountable to it. You're alone with your inner nature to decide and use who you are to command your universe freshly. The hand in the image to the right represents the truth of your attention and its content. Your leg represents the truth of the backdrop of your resident lively cause. It may initially assist you to place your hand on your leg, but then leave that gesture and any study materials behind to simply stay with cause. Then if challenging systemic stories are as b, this dedicated time makes it much easier to see the distinction between the man cause, a, and thus for you to decide to stay with cause, even if they continue by your side, the red field seen here. I'll guide you through your first command session. It may be helpful to review text or your notes or glance at your favorite illustration before you start. That's called preparatory resolve. See upper right picture. Okay, sit comfortably and close your eyes. There, that's it. That's all. Smile. Did some kind of mental activity or physical sensation happen automatically? You'll get used to automatically coming back to favor the elegant simplicity of your still silent you, who knows what you're up to, and has got you covered as automatically as something else noisy happening. Almost certainly when you're new to this, you'll hear a systemic story in your head. 
I need to do more, or else I'm wasting my time. Through contrast, it comes to remind you that you can enjoy the elegant simplicity of only favoring still silent presence. In that way it's a very helpful friend, and certainly not to be resenting, resisting, or trying to control its presence. If you feel obligated to say it, it's my goal to be still and silent, and if that's not happening, I haven't mastered my dedicated time, means you've missed the big picture. You're thus hanging on relative wave by a rule you've made. Doing nothing to accomplish everything is exactly that. No matter where you conclude you are in mastership, because you already own it. That's what your dedicated time is helping you get used to so that you take that out into the ways of your daily living. Every time you do a session, you'll take more of original cosmic supreme mastery with you as a snowball effect. Every time you study the materials, see something more clearly, or hear something you never heard before, you'll take more of original cosmic supreme mastery with you. Some may want to see the dedicated time as a straightforward technique. What exactly is the procedure? Am I doing it correctly? Just tell me what to do. However, this text is about understanding, not hypnotically following instructions. Simply understand exactly why you're there and what it is to be accomplished. Then on your own making perfect sense to you with your own conviction taking full responsibility, you'll know exactly what to do. Not knowing what to do only indicates that cosmic non-change facts should be more carefully decided upon. Sufficiently knowing who you are automatically takes care of sufficiently knowing what to do during your command session. Initially I only referred to the absolute as no thing, no experience, to keep definitions as straightforward, logical as possible. It's important not to get lost in abstractions. However you'll eventually hear touch, see, taste, and smell everything in all your absolute bodies within your non-change absolute realm. What about experiencing your subtle lively? Non-change absolute realm. When the first systemic organizer saw it, he was mesmerized with its beauty and delight. It's so different from the changing relative that you won't need to ask. With its complete effulgence, you'll simply know that you're experiencing it. There won't be any absence to support not knowing. That's why you're unlikely to hear anyone talk about it. They know you need to know it for yourself. Keep an open mind. Images from the East can be very misleading. To summarize and finalize this topic of your command session, familiarity with why you're already inherent presence right where you are prior to your dedicated time, and then acting appropriately according to the fundamental fact is how your dedicated time proceeds. If you remember any words as preparatory resolve prior to your session, they should be I. Your highest body playfully delight in your providence during your dedicated time by my mere presence. Living in my prison world, who would ever have thought such a thing existed? You'll never hear constraints and hindrances from me. They're the nature of systemics. You and I are above that. If you're gazing at images during preparatory resolve, just like you did with your leg, you may touch your chest, if only in your mind. It refreshes where you're about to favor going next. Your one all celebrative body. It makes a concrete impression of guidance. Then when you have a sufficient solid resolve of what you're there for, you'll leave it behind for your still silent cause since that still silence, your final body, is where everything you find desirable comes from. Ideally, Whatever you can do to grasp the story of life's big picture in one shot, is a perfect preparatory resolve, then you're solidly prepared for what you'll do next. Look at this flow to the left which, is a quick summation. There you are as the original cosmic supreme master, because of complete self-love you pretend to lose in order to find. Perception is thus shut down, there you are finding with nothing to see. You can only know with higher order cognition. So now acting as if you're whole again, because you never truly stop being whole, you celebrate yourself by taking direct action with the command content of attention, $10,000, for instance. All good, making perfect sense. Here I go with my final cause one all celebrative body. 
then you're left with the elegant simplicity of simply being who you are as your final body to take care of whatever you would find most desirable. All returns can be inner if you like. If you get a return in your universe, it's your first systemic organizer's private dream anyway. Page 11. So what's not daydreaming? So the difference between daydreaming and the real world is actually trivial. Even your CCA is daydreaming. Real. Is only an illusion, except for your absolute non-change body. You can't experience everything you want behind closed eyes with an inner vision similar to a dream. You've had the experience of waking up from a dream that was so real that you're not sure if it actually happened, yes? Let's say you want to drive a $3 million Bugatti Roadster. You'd have all the tactile experience and fulfillment as if you went through the outer conventional acquisition channels. If you wanted pride of ownership through others' reactions, that would be in your inner experience too. It's so much more convenient and efficient to take care of everything inside. The chocolate ice cream cone is exactly as cold on your tongue with the inner experience as with the outer. You come away with the same satisfaction. Your five senses function on all layers of the universe as a real experience. That's why advanced users are often so quiet and out of sight. I'm not talking about astral travel or requiring a lucid sleep state. I'm talking about having a return of your own 100% real private inner experience to accomplish everything precisely as you wish. No partial returns. Yes, you're sitting in a chair but you'd feel your legs move and sense everything without them moving. If you're in freezing snow but want to feel warm, you would. If you want to kiss someone's lips from a distance, you would. Or vice versa. I let you use your imagination. Smile. You'd approach this by sitting for a session. You'd have that CCA. Then during that same sitting, you'd open yourself for an inner experience return to happen at that time. You wouldn't try to manifest the experience but have it flow as providence from your final cause all one celebrative body as easily and automatically as a dream in sleep. Then while you decide what to do next they'd be the gentlest, faintest, most comfortable intention. Why? Because your unconditional best friend is right here inside on hand with no separation. The only drawback is that you're not assisting others' lines of expansion. That is unless you connect with them on the inner experience plane as well. So it doesn't necessarily mean you're alone. Into your dream world, you could invite beings from higher realms who'd enjoy roaming in what you've created. They could bring in lovely artifacts and activities that you may not have imagined on your own. They could show you some fantastic things in their realms, including the park of your one celebrative realm. There are adorable, flexible, harmonious beings who specialize in archetypal areas that interest you. It would be like hiring a pro. They would take a form that syncs with your specialty. The fun part is that when you see yourself as concealed and private to do whatever you want, you drop all inhibitions and find out what you really want to do. That doesn't mean creating a separate local universe although it could if you like. It could mean absolutely any dream form container with your own systemics because you're as singularly free as your final causal one celebrative body. Maybe you like a setting with no bugs, bacteria, or decay. Then a gentle breeze that you control, no clouds if you don't like them. Maybe you never want to have to clean yourself, use a digestive system, have to cut your hair and nails, and so on. Of course all this you can't do in your world as you know it now. Maybe you'd like to try it and perfect it in private before going public. It might be fun to be a competitor to Tesla for transportation. Maybe you'd like to multiply yourself into various creatures and experience them all at once as your one all body does. Maybe you'd like to taste your own scow or feel what it's like to be a cloud. Maybe when you talk to others they feel you like a soft, sweet wind blowing through them. Maybe you'd like your old self to stay on earth while other multiples of yourself explore your subtle lively, non-change absolute realm. However, if you'd just like to exit this world as you now know it, yet you think you're necessary because of the responsibilities and commitments you've made or because of those who would dearly miss you, think again. The you you're sitting for during your command session can replace anyone with anyone else anytime it wants, like a benevolent invasion of the body snatchers. Smile. It might be fun to check back once in a while to see what's going on with the other you. 
Maybe you only have an abstract concept of magnitude for what you'd like as in page 12 super duper intention. That will do just fine. Remember you're here because you love yourself so much that you want others to rediscover what you do. The final self-love celebrate of absolute non-change part of you is leading the way. ITFFE, Informed Transitional Fond Flow Effulgence For those who have not yet mastered their supremacy and need to be practical and reasonable moving in their everyday world, we'll take two examples of practical responsibilities outside your sessions during your day. 1. Your rent is due today at 5 p.m. 2. You need something to eat right now. Commanding your universe sufficiently to take care of that immediately could present a very reasonable, responsible challenge inside yourself. The same goes for simply remaining however you find yourself for its instant return. You're putting yourself on the line literally universal line. Smile. This is a time to stand back and view the big picture of what a universe means. Everything knows what it's doing because the complete you knows what they're up to. From that big view, losing yourself is as valid as finding yourself as OAP because you love everything you do. Paying rent and getting food the hard way is as valid as instantly manifesting supply with who you are as OAP. Taking care of details with your limited faculties at hand is no conflict since you know what you're doing right there too. This stance could also be considered your higher order cognition. With that, you'll playfully favor OAP mastery over doing things the hard way. We'll call that ITFFE. Informed transitional fond flow effulgence. Favoring means you don't fight, force, or call the full you enemy to get what you want. As the full you is everything everywhere forever, all at once, where's your enemy? It can only be an illusion of localized perceptions conclusion. This favoring is the only thing that makes sense to do. You'll look at the facts and decide. Chocolate ice cream may be your all-time favorite. Pistachio is okay, but peanut butter is unacceptable. As a practical person, not yet fully effulgent, you make trade-offs and sacrifices. If you're at the ice cream store and they're out of chocolate, you'll go with pistachio. You'll probably just leave if both are gone and they only have peanut butter. Transitional FFE means that because you're familiar with who you are and what you do, you know, only peanut butter happened for the most precious majestic reason. Of course, acknowledging that you're a free will agent who is designed to say no, you'll continue to favor chocolate in a poised manner with no anger or disappointment. You'll favor your free will to change your universe because that's equally you. You may have done something fraudulent in the past that to this day still haunts you. You know that you as one all person doesn't do such things nor feel wrong about anything. Therefore, the haunting story inside your head tells you that you're not one all person. It's the same old, systemic story. According to the law of cause and effect you're experiencing the haunting results of a past fraudulent act. That law is a lesser truth and thus a lesser priority than OAP. If you're studying this text your line of evolution now emphasizes the integration of your identity and actions as one all person. Your evolution is now using your fraudulent past haunt as a tool to help you integrate OAP. You're forced to deal with a systemic fraud identity when your primary emphasis is to utilize everything for OAP realization. As far as your benefit to others, which is the theme of your haunt, you'll contribute far more to the world by expressing OAP than you would by trying to remedy a past mistake on the level of its local detail. So stay with taking care of your OAP realization. If you want to somehow make amends for your mistake, realizing your OAP status is the most worthy and honorable action you can take. Seeing what the fool you is up to, your stance will be okay. So I'm not OAP. I get it. That systemic story in my head comes as no surprise. Let's see what I do next. Let's say you're in a dedicated time, closed eyed. Something just feels off cloudy or somewhat annoying. You could pause to review the facts but you don't feel like engaging your intellect. You'd rather just get on with it. Here's something that requires almost nothing. Presence is like the omnipresent sky. Being present for your return is like being out in the open sky. However, sometimes it's cloudy. Sometimes, 
the blue sky is entirely gone. Yet everyone knows the blue sky is still there behind the clouds. We can't conceive of that easily, even when we're a young child. Presence is where our return comes from. Presence is still there even if the sky is gray with clouds. As long as it's still there, and that's all that counts, you're good to go. There's no point in hanging your concern on clouds even if they seem to insist on staying. That's an incredibly simple fact to act on. Then say after your dedicated time, someone you've agreed to honor wants to paint your house gray. You'd prefer blue, but know you have to compromise in order to honor the person. That's ITFFE, but with the info in this text, you know the presence of the adorable 12 attributes is still fully present with the house painted gray. The total value of the 12 attributes is what counts, so going with ITFFE is a breeze, such as the benefit of your higher order cognition. In this illustration, you see more her room being made for an expansion opportunity. Lower vibration, maybe I can, this is going to take too long. I'm fed up with all these conclusions and obstructions in my world. Life sucks. See? I'm not OAP. I need to do more. Then, higher order cognition. As the adorable sweetheart you I never message you that way. And I'm right under your nose as your inner nature, your priceless treasure house of immeasurable majesty. Even on hand for your lowest vibration. Since I'm all. End of the main text. Questions without answers to test your comprehension. What's the purpose of this text? Page 2. What should you expect as you return to reread the text? Page 2. What's the fundamental fact that everything else here is based on? Page 3. What's the single word that best describes the state that everything has in common? Page 3. What are the two most basic states that belong to presence? And what is the most apt analogy to represent them? Page 4. What makes the absolute indivisible? Page 4. What's an example of a lesser or incomplete truth? And what is the value of making its distinction compared to a more complete truth? Page 4. Why is the still silent absolute field supreme? Page 5. Why are you that still silent all pervasive one no thing, and thus the final essential state of, and the very nature of, presence? Page 6. How does wave come to be in the first place? Why does it happen? Page 7. Anytime you speak, the original cosmic supreme master right here just spoke. Why? Page 7. What is the flow of facts that say one thing is beneficent perfection? Page 8. The phenomenon of a constrained field distorting your conclusion applies to what areas of your life? Page 8. What does the example of dents and scratches on the coffee table tell you about how you view life? Page 8. If you could see all the details of the universe, why would you smile in peaceful affection? Page 8. Why is it hard for people to wrap their heads around the statement you're all alone, no one else in the universe besides you? All your private dream. Page 9. Why can't each part of the whole experience complete control over all other parts, as if that one part was all alone in a lucid dream? Page 9. How are the two fundamental aspects of the universe, absolute and relative, reflected in your personal body? Page 10. Why is your absolute body called a lively absolute body? Page 10. Why do you as one all person have to shut down perception to expand? Page 11. Why are systemics required? Page 11. 
How many of your 12 absolute attributes can you name? Page 11. What is the command content of attention, and what is a return? Page 12. When you have a super duper intention, what do you know about what's missing? Page 12. In the example of your boss wearing a wolf mask, why do you go right on treating him like your boss and do what you came in for? Page 13. How is your one absolute body your infinite safety net? How does that work? Page 13. Where does favoring fit into your dedicated time? Page 13. What is the difference between preparatory resolve and dedicated time? Page 13. What during your dedicated time do you not want to be accountable for? Page 14. What is the story in people's heads that they'll almost certainly hear when new to doing command sessions? Page 14. Why is it not your goal to have inner stillness? and silence during your dedicated time. What will happen if you have that goal? Page 14. What do you automatically take with you after your dedicated time? Page 14. If you remember any words as preparatory resolve prior to your session, what should they be? Page 15. Ideally, what is the perfect picture in your mind to grasp in one shot for preparatory resolve? Page 16. How does the return of your command content of attention work as an inner dream? Page 17. How does informed transitional font flow fulgence help you out? Page 18. During your Dedicated time, what about your final body, makes it so adorable, easy, and simple to do a session? Can you trace that back to one thing? All pages.